Hi guys, it's Claris, and uh, today we are getting ready to do another tutorial, uh, a holiday tutorial, as soon as I can fix this camera. And um, we are going to be doing poinsettias. Uh, I've had a request for pink poinsettias, and uh, so I'm going to try my best to see how if we can get the color right and if not that's okay we can rely on the excuse that this is a loose style of painting and uh, you can always change the colors if you don't like the pink but here's the technique uh, I'm gonna let you know what colors I'm using to achieve this look I am using my St. Petersburg watercolors and I have over here black uh, the um, Matter Lake red which is like a pinky red uh, then I have the umber, I have green, and I have yellow ochre. So the umber and green obviously for the leaves, the yellow ochre is going to be for the center, and then these two will be for the actual petals for the flower. I have my palette, and uh, the brushes I'm going to be using are going to be the number 8 uh, black velvet, silver black velvet. I have my number 4 as well. And I am also going to be using the uh, Da Vinci uh, mop brush, but I might not end up using it. So I'm just going to keep it on the side and let's see uh, how this kind of pans out. All right. So first things first, I have my water ready. I have my uh, paper towel ready. And we're going to start off by mixing some of the um, Matter Lake red or pink onto the palette and it's got quite a bit of water on here already. Now I'm using the black to kind of mix it in with the uh, pink so I can get a nicer darker hue uh, off it and uh, what I also want to do actually is uh, put some violet on the side here so I'm just going to keep that handy in case we end up using it. I might not use it but just in case. All right, so now that I have this color ready, I'm using the number eight to lay down our first set of petals. And uh, I want them to be lighter. That's why the consistency right here is more water, less color. I'm just gonna make sure that the you guys can see and it's not blurry. All right, so first things first, I am going to do a, I'm gonna do one over here on this side. And we're just going to use the same technique we use to create leaves um, to create the petals for this one here. All right, so uh, I'm just going to do lay down some color. Now, using the number eight, I always kind of end up using a lot of making making the florals a lot bigger. So I'm going to try and make them small. So first things first, I laid down my first stroke, then I'm going to do the second stroke and add a little bit of white space in between as I add that in. So remember the white space because it gives us a nice variation of color. I'm just dipping the tip into the red just to get a slight <coughs> darker hue to one side. So pressing it down again. If I can, I clearly wasn't able to achieve that. That's okay. And notice I'm allowing them to touch and that is fine. Leaving that white space still. Uh, I'm going to go and create one petal on this end here. And then again, getting more color. Loosely going to lay another one here. Try and leave the center uh, with white space so that we can add our, our yellows. <clears throat> I'm going to add another petal around over here. And the petals don't need to be the exact same size. Dipping the tip in water here just to get a nice variation of a lighter pink perhaps. Just did that there. Just getting some lighter pink here again and I'm going to create a final petal here and again leaving white space in between 
Um, feel free to add like a couple of like loosey petals here and there like because that's how the flower is per se and I'm just making them very light so that it doesn't overpower with what we have already. All right, so this is gonna be like a full looking poinsettia. Just very lightly I'm adding like background petals here. And pushing the color to the middle. All right, so I'm gonna leave this as is. We're gonna give this some time to dry and then we're gonna go in and add a darker color or hue on top of this. Um, for that, let's just mix the colors while this is kind of drying. And I am going to go ahead and get more of this color that we have, this beautiful color. I'm mixing it on here. <clears throat> and I think I am going to use the number four to put the color down. So putting my number eight aside, I'm just gonna get my number four and get some of that color there, mix it in here. And as soon as I see signs of it's like almost dried, I'm gonna go back in and add some of this in there. Now you can feel free to add a hint of black if you wish, just to give it a slightly darker hue. So I've mixed some of that over here on the side, so I'm getting that. Uh, but we can use that for the center and you'll see what I mean by center. So I'm gonna get more of the pink <clears throat> to lay down first and then we'll do the darker hue for the center. All right, so I think we're good and we can kind of lay down the next few and these are gonna be a lot smaller than what we've laid down previously. And so we just wanna go in between over here and do the exact same motion that we did and lay it down. Now you can see some of the color kind of spreading out, that's okay, don't worry. Um, it's clearly still not completely dried, but it's a loose watercolor effect, so it's kind of nice if we have that anyways. Next one I'm gonna do is going to be over here on the opposite end. And I am just making sure that the consistency that I have is more color, less water, so that it's darker and it pops out more. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of that black and this is just to make sure that when I apply a petal over here, it doesn't kind of blend and look blobby. And for that, I just need to make sure I'm getting something that isn't too dark, but at the same time is dark enough that you can see the difference. So let's hope this works. Adding the same motion here. There we go, and I kind of like that. That actually looks quite nice. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. And then finally, I'm gonna go back to some of that pink that we have, and I'm gonna lay that down over here on this end. I should just move all these colors out from the way. There we go. So I'm gonna let this dry a little bit more and then we're gonna go back and do a third layer of this uh, on top over here. In the meantime, let's do some of the leaves. So the leaves, we're doing the exact same thing like we've been doing so far for for these. And let's just try the mop brush for the leaves to see what kind of effect we can get. So I'm just washing my mop brush to get some of the previous color from it out. And then we're gonna go in and get some of uh, our beautiful green. And this is like one of my favorite greens. And I'm just mixing that onto the side. And you can get uh, again we want this to be 
like a nice shade of green so that it gives a good offset to the pink. I'm going to go semi, like a medium dark in terms of consistency. And let's do one, let's do one leaf uh, over here. So I'm just going to do a protruding line. Actually, this is still not dark enough. There we go, and then I'm just going to use the tip to create the same shape we've been doing for the uh, for the petals. And I want to taper the edge, and then do the same thing down there. And leaving white space is a good thing, guys. So if you're able to do that, please by all means. Do it if it comes easy. Now I'm just going to take the number four um, and I'm going to get some of the green directly from here and maybe mix it in with some of the umber too that I have here. Let's put it here so you can see it on screen. And I am going to add a couple of strokes on the inside while this is still damp. To give it to give us like a nice texture happening so there's one and let's do another one over here and for that I am going to use this for a trail or a stem and then we'll do our leaf and then here we go here's the leaf And here's another one, the other half of the leaf, I mean. And then we're doing the same thing that we did here. We're just using the tip of this to kind of uh, uh, outline the edges to give it a nice color variation and kind of push all the dark color to the bottom. If you can leave a white space in between, that would be great. If not, that's okay. No worries, no hassle, because you can always try it the next time if you are unable to get that effect. And then uh, I guess while we're still kind of waiting for things to kind of dry around, because this is kind of, this involves like a little bit of layering, I'm just going to mix some of the umber green and get a variation off it so we can create a couple of other tiny leaf foliages or what have you around this bit and uh, I'm going to try and make it a fairly light I guess uh, rendition of this green and we'll create a couple of strokes um, to kind of give us some berries so I'll just do a couple of strokes over here. Stemming from where the leaf ends there. And then now uh, we'll give it some nice cute little longer leaves that kind of just go on the stem. Just like that. So it's easier to kind of do, and then we're not spending too much time hassling about with it. I'm doing an extension down here, kind of create another leaf. And then just dipping the tip of my brush in water to create a couple of more of these tendril type of, um, I guess, extensions. I'll do one this way. But not too high because I, I don't think I want it to go higher than than that leaf there. Give it some hierarchy. And try and control the sizing for these. 
if you can and I'm just using a darker shade to kind of add to the tips of these areas here while it is still damp it gives us a nice sense of light and dark and uh, let's see we'll do a couple of strands here too so then we can add the little berry that I was talking about the whole point of these leaves here just add some over here too, it's kind of peeking out and then I'll just do <clears throat> Actually, we have three. I don't think we need to do any more. Uh, I think now you can wash the brush and we can go back in to do some darker uh, petals on the inside of our little uh, or big poinsettia. So getting color directly from here again, I'm going to go ahead and mix it in with what I have here. So we get a nice dark hue. And then I am going to go ahead and create um, the same, like I'm overlapping over the same uh, petals that we previously made. And like I mentioned before, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it can be close to it. And by perfect and close to it I mean overlapping the same areas that we did and I'm trying to leave like white space or space in between so you can see the base color peeking in if that makes any sense and I am getting a nice dark hue of this pink I want it to be nice and layered. We'll do one more here. There we go, and we have that. And that's quite nice, and I like how that's turned out. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna add a couple of uh, we're gonna add detail to the um, to the petals so we're just gonna take uh, what we had previously mixed here which was like a little bit of the black with the with the with the pink or the red that we're using and I want to get a fairly watered down consistency of this and I'm just going to use the number four to create a couple of lines just like so and this is as giving it texture If you feel like it's too dark, you can always just like add additional water. So just do the same motion all throughout. Trying to keep it nice and thin. And kind of continue this all around.
and just kind of getting my brush in water and getting the color. Now this one I, I, I drew in the stem, but I haven't been doing the stem for the rest of them. Because again, this is a loose rendition. Also, we're using colors that are not ideally typical um, for your traditional poinsettia. So I'm kind of really going out on a limb here and creating something almost tropical looking, isn't it? So I kind of really like how this is turning out. Uh, so then finally, once this is really dried and proper on the inside, we're going to do the same motion, uh, but with a darker shade, obviously. And um, what we also want to do at this point is mixing a little more of the black, or even if you want to take some of the purple and mix it in with what we have over here on the side. And this is just to give the inside edges a tad more dark shade and I'm just kind of it's still slightly damp so I'm just kind of doing a couple of dabs on the inside we could have done it earlier on too but I was too busy focusing on other stuff so if you try doing another poinsettia you can totally try that again uh, but you see how the dark center really kind of adds something nice to it and then uh, for those who want to take it slightly further and like enhance this, uh, you can also take some of the dark that we just created, but water down and just kind of highlight the edges here. And assuming it's not completely damp and you're able to get like a shadow looking effect, great. Um, already we kind of have that shadowy effect because of what we uh, painted earlier but if you're able to get and you want to get another darker effect then you can do this and you can see the difference between the uh, petals so feel free to try this method or completely leave this out uh, if it is not to your liking but it is an option. So I'm just kind of showing you what it looks like and then you can decide if you want to do that or not. And then finally on this end and then I'm just going to leave it at that. Actually, just giving it a darker blend here, or just blending it out rather, sorry. By just taking water on my brush and just kind of blending out the color, that's what I'm doing. All right, so we've done that, and now um, we can kind of go on the centers and add our detail. So for that, like I said previously, I'm going to do some of the red. And then I am using some of the black to get like a darker hue. Uh, and it's already pretty dark, so we want this to be dark so that we can actually see when we add the lines, just like so. So there's one. This is actually my third video doing a poinsettia. Over the years I have done I've done one every Christmas. Uh, they're kind of like a tough flower, in my opinion, to do because, um, <clears throat> uh, at least for the loose style, I don't quite like any of the renditions out there that you have for them. And when I kind of try to do them, I always end up 
adding extra detail. So even with this, uh, what I'm doing right now, while it's very different from the other ones I've done in the past, uh, I do find myself adding detail. So it loses that whole loose uh, effect. Uh, not entirely, obviously, but um, but it's a lot more... There's more details compared to if I were to do it really loose without, you know, adding too much. So here's that. That's how it looks. Let's just let that dry for a bit. And I'm just going to add some of the black to the green that we have happening. So I've added that to the side and I'm going to do the same thing for the leaves. And kind of maybe even let it trail off. <clears throat> I do find when I do them on a smaller scale, they look a lot more looser. So maybe it is the sizing. That helps. So there we go. So you can see we've done, we've done those details to that. So just gonna let that dry off and um, and then we're just gonna go in and add some um, some of the berries that we had previously started on and I'm adding some uh, carmine red to the purple that I have and I don't really need to add it to the purple I can just use the carmine red directly uh, it's just another variation of the red that I was using previously. And I'm just going to add cute little berries, leaving white space in between. And just add them randomly, loosely, wherever you see fit. So there's a couple there and I'm just going to do a couple over here. So it's interesting how it kind of evolves, right? I mean, sometimes um you might end up doing something and um, you have a certain vision in your mind and it doesn't quite turn out that way. Um, and every time I find when I do these florals like this, uh, I get different results. So if I show you my practice sheet, which I'm going to show you in a few seconds, it is, while it looks similar, it's not exactly similar to what I have here. So, um, I encourage you to try this tutorial again um, or tr th try the method again and you might just be surprised by the results. Uh, just to give you an idea, this was a practice session I had done on YouTube, sorry not YouTube, on uh, Instagram. Uh, I figured why not make it alive while I am practicing and then right after I tried this and I really liked how this turned out and you can see the difference. It's similar, but then again, the sizing really makes a difference, right? So keep that in mind. And um, what was I going to do? Oh, yes, we're doing the center, which is the yellow. Now, in hindsight, as I'm looking back, I wish I had done the centers first and then done the petals that might have been a lot easier and uh, I would have probably been able to do some size control as well uh, so we'll not get a whole lot of I guess bright yellow happening in the center but keep that in mind for next time so I just put a little bit of yellow and you can see it it does make a, a difference 
and we are done. So thanks guys for watching and uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. I've kept this fairly basic. Um, it's a lot of layering and whatnot. Uh, try it out, let me know and uh, um, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, you can send me your images there. I love uh, checking out what you guys have done and how it turns out. So um, yeah. So we'll chat soon, guys, and see you for Sunday live at 2 p.m. EST. All right. Bye.